Friends, uh, just uh, in the morning, which I just uh, actually uh, I sent a file in which there were some uh, complications uh, or some points of critical incidents uh, uh, peep through in a different way. Okay. For instance, uh, I will start with never events. Okay. So, Rifa, uh, in, uh, what do you think? What can be the never events in anesthesia? And how to prevent them? A anyone knows about what can be the yes, yes, refer. Anyone wants to speak out? Never events can be events. So, uh, uh, say for example, things that can be prevented through precautions or, or uh, being more vigilant before starting the surgery or preoperatively or intraoperatively. Incidences mm -hmm. in which. Um, we can reconfirm and reevaluate the a, patient. There is a proper uh, format for doing it. What is that one? Uh, Pre-op anesthesia evaluation or on table assessment, a very quick review of uh, say what surgery is supposed to be done, patient identification with site of surgery. Uh, there is a specific there is a specific algorithm to do that. WHO. I am giving you a hint. Oh, yes, we're talking about the uh, uh, time in, time out. Yes, WHO surgical safety checklist. Okay. Yeah. WHO surgical safety checklist is the one uh, which is um, uh, to avoid actually some of the never events. Never events, uh, not all uh, uh, never events are related to WHO surgical safety checklist, but some of them may be avoided like correct patient, correct site, correct surgery. Okay, I will just show you. Just... Okay, uh, like uh, patient identity, site, procedure, consent. Okay, and then um, actually there is one is uh, uh, sign in, then other is uh, there is one another thing which is check in. Okay, which is being done in the holding area. Different hospitals use this as a different way. Like, first of all, when the patient is coming, the nursing staff is taking uh, uh, the information, any, any, any information about the patient, about the procedure, site, any drains, anything, anything related to the patient. Okay, and then the, when the patient is uh, taken inside or in some hospitals, this sign-in and check-in will be done together. Okay, and in some hospitals, uh, it will be again reconfirmation will be done at sign in. Okay, so in which they will ask any anesthesia uh, machine safety checklist is done and pulse oximeter or all other monitoring equipment is there. Okay, any allergy, any blood needed, any aspiration risk, uh, and uh, they will be asking you, uh, asking the surgeons how much is that duration and any critical steps and etc. 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 Okay. Then before in CN, they reconfirm all the things, okay? Uh, actually, I missed one thing that there is one, one more thing, which is before that, uh, this is called as team briefing, okay? Team briefing and debriefing. So team briefing is being done uh, before as a team, the whole of the team is sitting and then uh, chalking out what uh, will be the plan, where will be the patient going after the surgery, what will be the requirement of the surgery, how much is estimated blood loss, like anything, anything related to the, the procedure will be considered, okay? So this will be avoiding wrong-sided surgery, wrong-sided patient, okay? So uh, this is one of the uh, the thing and then sign out it will be uh, about all the specimens and all the count uh, like account of uh, this one uh, uh, surgical swabs and things like that okay so and after that the patient will be shifted to the recovery so this is the whole uh, of the of the thing with to avoid a number of complications which may occur okay and similarly, what will be the never events other than that? Like, for example, uh, how to avoid wrong blood administration. 
anyone please how to avoid wrong blood administration there is a there is a paper which comes uh, as a donor and recipient paper okay and then you know because under anesthesia sometimes for example the the mistake which people do is that they are checking only the paper and the car, and the blood so that will of course if the blood is coming the paper will be the same but it uh, it, it it's still possible that uh, the blood which is coming to the room is uh, belonging to some other patient okay so you have to take the patient's file and if possible the patient's id band okay because uh, uh, there should be an id band attached to the patient in which all the information the mr number and uh, the patient name age sex or all, all things should be written so this is not only practically uh, because in even the best of the centers this is a possibility so uh, this question may be asked in the exam in tokes in the oski exams and actually practically everyone face this so you should be aware of how to avoid wrong blood administration okay so they check the type uh, blood group then they check the expiry date they check the uh like uh, as i told you that you have to check it with the patient file patient uh, uh, id band okay in addition to the card and the blood which is patient coming with the patient so these are the things another thing regarding medications okay because uh, there are um, a number of errors which are related to uh, wrong uh, the the the, pro, the mistakes may be the mistakes may be uh, wrong dose drug concentration site in in many hospitals where a, a pharmacy is the one dispensing the medication so uh, some some medication may be coming to the wrong patient so again the same uh, safety checklist should be uh, should be done okay so another aspect of similar is iv extravasation okay extravasation of uh, the iv line was uh, out or bulging and you gave the medication and now the iv line uh, the medication is in the subcutaneous tissue or uh, extravascular space okay then another similar thing is intra arterial okay there was intra arterial pathology for the bad handwriting which is one of intra arterial okay so how to manage uh, a wrong medication uh, which is being given in the intra intra arterial space in the sorry intra arterial line what to do anyone please sir first of all uh, we'll stop the drug stop the giving drug okay and uh, then we will not uh, pull out the cannula the cannula should stay inside and uh, we will wash it with uh, normal saline and uh, we'll give uh, lignocaine or uh, if there is any vasoconstriction or anything then we will also, we can also give pepavirine pepavirine what else there is one one thing which is written also usually the we suppose that usually the the iv lines are in the upper limb so uh, what is the block name uh, uh, block steeled ganglion block steeled ganglion block okay so these are the things and of course it will be dependent whether it is uh, patient is awake or patient is uh, slept this this is one thing and as a principal always always say call for help okay and uh, like because you see anything can happen for example uh, because of uh, severe pain vasovagal syncope can occur because actually it's a very painful thing especially they ask uh, the is thiopentone okay traditionally so you have to be and what about uh, this uh, which i asked you extravasation what you do for it
For example, you give 50 milligram of uh, rocuronium plus 200 milligram of propofol. And now the patient is still smiling at you and the medication is inside. What will happen? What you should do? Yes, please. If we keep it interactive, it will be good for all of you. Anyone wants to answer? We will just try to try to remove the cannula. We will try to press and then uh, we can uh, elevate. Okay. And we can have pre bandage, but still, still what will be the chances that maybe there will be delayed recovery and recurarization. Okay. Recurarization in the because propofol will not uh, damage anything, but rocuronium can cause problems. So you have to be careful about recurarization. Okay. So this is uh, one thing which is important. Okay. If you have given, for example, opioids, so you will subsequently reduce the dose. So this is what you should be knowing about it. Actually, I will just open the page which I shared. You know, I, I will tell you something funny. Some of uh, one of the person messaged me and can you believe this? I was happy that he may be asking about something about, about the topic. But you know, the, the person was asking about this, that what is this get outlook for Android? So I was really disappointed. Okay. I was really disappointed that nothing was being asked in any of the group where I sent this message. And the thing which was asked was what is outlook for Android? Because I just wrote it in my email and then I copy paste it to the WhatsApp group. So I will just show you what. He was gaining deep knowledge. Yes, he was gaining. And he was asking me about one of the Android app. He wants to use Android app to, to learn anesthesia. So I, I was so disappointed that I cannot tell you that whole of the purpose of my uh, conducting all these sessions is not to, to have anything, believe me, no financial interest, no personal gain. I don't want anything in return. But the only thing which I want is the people correct their concept. And the, the residents, unfortunately, the, the junior of the resident, none of them attend. And uh, uh, like, I will, I will share uh, uh, with you with something which I was asked by one of the very senior uh, consultant about uh, organizing yeah. the things in a better way. And he was actually, he was, award, he wanted me to collect the data that how many people are attending, which part of the world was some of the people at the moment are from Europe. Uh, I'm not sure, but uh, Dr. Dora is in, in Europe. Okay. And uh, some, some are sitting in Saudi Arabia, some are in Pakistan, some in India. So it's been an honor for me, but the, the message which I want you to know that please you, all of you who reach up till this level, they are not dumb. Believe me, don't, they don't want to be taught. They just want a little bit of guidance, how to read, how to target a topic, how to deal with the uh, situation. Okay. So this is my message is, and, I'm sorry. I cannot hear you. Anyways, so actually, uh, uh, the never events which I told you, wrong sided block, wrong sided surgery, wrong blood, extravasation, intra arterial drug error. Okay, so prevent uh, to prevent drug error. Uh, what are the possible ways uh, to prevent the dr drug errors? Uh, you you can label them nicely. The person who is giving the medication, same person should make the medications preferably. And uh, immediately there should be labeling and there should be department if, if possible, standardization of the even, even the concentration and even the syringes being used. Okay. 
because this will avoid drug error. For example, if you are making some medication, someone is taking in 5 cc, someone is taking 10 cc, so it can create problem. So proper labeling and actually there is a, 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 like a, a international standard for drug labeling. I will I will just show you uh, syringe. Yes, uh, I'm sorry, actually I was disconnected. Uh, so I will just, uh, yes, uh, actually I was disconnected. Can you hear me all of you? All of you can hear me now? Yes, now, yes, now. I, actually I was, I was disconnected. Uh, so um, they, actually there is international uh, syringe labeling. Okay. So uh, I, if I, if anyone missed, what I was saying that uh, to avoid there should be standardization in syringes and concentration. I'm sorry, we can't see your screen, right? I am sorry. I'm sorry. Actually, I was disconnected. So I think everything is disconnected. Yes. Okay. So we yeah, there should be standardization in syringes concentration labeling proper labeling should be done okay and uh, the person who is have to administer the dr drug should be the one who, to make the the, uh, the the medications as well okay so there are some international uh, like a standard for syringe labeling there is color coding like if there is neuromuscular blocking agent usually it is red color uh, i don't find picture here but it is for neuromuscular blocking agents there is specific color coding and so you have to write the the medication name and the concentration and if possible the date when you prepare it okay so if you are making an infusion form is still it is better to have a department standardization so that everyone knows about it and there is uh, less chances of error okay so uh, so that is uh, to to avoid uh, wrong uh, drug error. So actually this question may be asked in the oral part. So never events. We just discuss about WHO surgical safety checklist to avoid any wrong sided patient. Myself, if someone says that he has not done a drug error, I think I, uh, I doubt uh, it, it's not possible for any anesthetist to, to go through it. It's not possible. He or she has not done any drug error. I, I myself gave wrong sided block because usually they used to do it in all the patients in right side, in the same patient, I did not check, unfortunately. In And you do the mistake when you become senior. Believe me, the junior person will be very careful. When you become very senior, sometimes you are prone to do some mistake. Uh, so uh, always check the patient ID, always ch check the patient site. And uh, like, uh, so wrong sided. So this is one of the thing. Then we discuss about drug error, IV extravasation, uh, intraarterial and uh, like how to avoid the drug errors okay so uh, we will go to the next because maybe we'll not be able to finish all of them but i will try to give you a general uh, you know when a critical incidents occur what should be the general approach anything happening wrong what should be the first thing to do always call for help and assistance, not only, it's not matter of help actually, it is for assistance because maybe you are alone and now you have to get the help of, and then remember the word stop. Okay, stop maybe medication, like in case of uh, any anaphylaxis or things like that, or there is overdosage, then you will be stopping it or stop the surgeon from manipulation or you have to like, for example, if there is vasovagal syncope because of uh, uh, any anything, like for example, if there was pneumoperitoneum, the depth of anesthesia was not adequate. Now, uh, suddenly there is bradycardia. So you have to immediately stop the surgeon. Similarly, they are doing ocular surgery and they did uh, vagal stimulation. You have to stop the surgeon. In any case, like you have to stop. Remember the word stop. Even stop the medication or stop the surgeon. Okay. Then your approach is airway breathing and circulation people when they are answering in oral exam they just use the word abc they are not able to explain it 
and actually does not create a good impression. So make sure the patient's airway is patent. Okay, patent, clear. Then patient is breathing. Breathing means that, for example, if the patients, this will be related to conscious level as well. Okay, consciousness will be, it's not written here, but actually you have to think about it that if the patient is not conscious, not able to maintain the airway, patient is not breathing nicely, then you have to go for even starting prop up will be one of the maneuver. Okay, and from prop up, it will be going for airway, nasopharyngeal airway, or then LMA, or then an endotracheal tube according to the scenario. Okay, even this simple maneuver, jaw thrust and chin lift will be included. Okay, so from prop up to putting and then nasal cannula or face mask, different types of face mask, whether venturi mask or a simple face mask or with reservoir bag, okay? Reservoir bag, sorry for the, the space. So uh, this will be related to uh, breathing and circulation. C is for circulation and you have to make sure patient's IV line is patent. If you want to take, if something like happen that you have to give fluids, then you will be taking extra IV line and you then also it is related to fluids. It is related to vasopressors or inotropes. Okay. Vasopropor, vasopressor or inotropes. According to the according to the scenario. Okay. And then actually the rest of the things will be, and then always you use the word resuscitation, evaluation, and management will go side by side, okay? Because there will be certain things in which you have to make a differential diagnosis, okay? Like for example, any change in uh, BP or heart rate, you have to look for, uh, look for the cause, okay? And then you will be doing some things and then you will be evaluating the patient and you will be do, start doing, uh, continue the resuscitation and you will be evaluating. So this is a very good answer to be given in the oral part, oral examination, or even thinking. Believe me, some people, when they are listening to discuss, this discussion, they are thinking this is for Viva. No, even in daily, you have to think, you have to evaluate, you have to manage. You cannot stay back and do, do, do everything in every patient. So in every patient, scenario will be different, but the basic principles are the same, okay? So uh, like uh, 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 this approach, you should be there. And then if you go towards uh, this uh, evaluation, there will be certain patient factors. Okay. There will be certain surgical factors. Okay. And there will be certain anesthetic factors. Okay. So whenever you are using this word of evaluation, you should be thinking that there will be some patient uh, patient factors. Patient factors mean, mean, for example, if the patient is elderly or pediatric or pregnant or patient has some comorbidity. So these will be that, like this, this patient is, for example, Pete's patient is prone uh, to become a hypoxic easily and prone to have cardiac arrest, for example, if the hypoxia is not treated. So this will be one of the factor you should be thinking about it. And for example, if you have a patient with hypertension or diabetes mellitus, so they are having autonomic dysfunction. So you will be expecting something in that some patient. So this is what, what we you called as patient factor, surgical factors. Surgical factor will be that in specific surgeries, you are expecting surgical certain complications. Like as I told you that any, wherever this vagus nerve is there, you are expecting bradycardia. Okay. So in in N is like a, if you are doing any surgery above the level of heart, you can expect air embolism. If you are doing an orthopedic procedure, you can expect fat embolism. So things like that. So there will be something related to the specific surgery, surgical procedure patient is undergoing. Okay. And then anesthetic factors. So anesthetic factors will be, for example, either uh, less anesthesia to be very simple. 
less anesthesia or more anesthesia okay you are over giving more anesthesia or you are less anesthesia so this should be the first answer it will be it can be opioids or it can be a muscle relaxant okay or it can be uh, this maintenance inhalational agent whatever but it either it will be less or more so this is one thing then you are related whenever you are having anesthesia you are playing with oxygen co2 mainly if you forget don't forget these things you will be able to uh, answer the question easily that either the problem will be related to oxygen or co2 okay and the end result will be in the vital signs which we take the, there will be problem in the blood pressure there will be problem in the heart rate there will be problem in the circulation and cardiac output there will be problem in uh, spo2 there will be problem in end tidal co2 or there will be problem in ecg for example okay so if you just target in that way any problem now we will just go one by one to the but this is the general approach okay so uh, this is this is common to any 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 complication you think think about like for example, if you just fit it, hypertension, uh, laryngoscopic stress response, this is an aesthetic factor. Okay. So you are expecting this thing. If you, there is a painful procedure and you did not give proper anesthesia, you are expecting uh, uh, there is, there will be open message in new window. Okay. This is better, I think. So, um, uh, like, uh, so you can fit all. Uh, aspect which I told you surgical uh, factor, anesthetic factor, patient factor. You can fit it here. Okay. Similarly, hypotension. If there is hypotension, either there is a problem with the systemic vascular resistance or is there, there the problem with the bleeding? Okay. So the, again, you can fit it in, in the headings which we discussed. Similarly, you can fit it in any, any of the like tachycardia, bradycardia, arrhythmias. And then like I will just go a little bit detail. So, because similarly, you will be going, for example, if we just uh, think about embol embolism, okay? If it is air or gas or thrombus, or fat or amniotic fluid embolism okay so there will be certain common things that whatever is happening it is blocking the pulmonary artery okay and then pulmonary artery is blocked there is no blood going to the lungs and there is nothing coming out to the heart to the left side of heart and there is no cardiac output okay so this is the basic principle yes this air embolism or thromboembolism may be more, uh, even gas embolism and air embolism is the same, but gas may be uh, some other gas other than uh, air, okay? So uh, this happens in carbon dioxide because usually carbon dioxide is easily dissolvable, but if it is going in the main vessel, it can cause the same features like air embolism, okay? So this may be more acute thrombus or air, and amniotic fluid embolism and fat embolism may be subacute. Okay. Maybe the clinical features will be, this can also be subacute, but usually this may be more acute than these one. Okay. Fat embolism, amniotic, there is one, one more thing in the, in the list is bone cement. Bone cement, which we use in the cer certain orthopedic procedures. Okay. So again, approach will be the same as, as I told you. You will immediately call for help. You will immediately stop the sur surgery. Like for example, if it is air embolism, what will you do? Will you in immediately inform the surgeon and you will change the position? Like you can say the stop the position and then you will make it head down. Okay. And you will irrigate. Okay. And you will ask the surgeon to use, a surgeon will do these things. Okay. Bone wax. Okay, and then certain things uh, in addition to airway breathing, circulation, hemodynamic support, then your target will be to do aspirated through CVP. 
okay and you can confirm it with with the help of t these are the things but actually your approach will be starting from the same thing which i told you so this is how you will be managing uh, air embolism okay the basic principle will be the same airway stop the surgeon make the it's a, it's a certain change in position and then in if they are asking you they will ask you about antidal co2 or antidal nitrogen okay and uh, some murmurs and the sensitive indicator in mcqs they ask what is the most sensitive uh, test is t because it can even uh, detect very small amount of air okay but usually which we get is antidal co2 okay antidal nitrogen is not there in every because antidal nitrogen will increase and antidal co2 will decrease okay so so this is how you will be targeting if for example thromboembolism thromboembolism occurs again your approach will be in the same way and you will be supporting the circulation because as i as i wrote in this this file uh, as uh, what i read here combo deals so these are combo there will be some problem with the uh, there will be problem both with the respiratory system and cardiovascular system there will be hypotension there will be decrease co2 there decrease there will be because there is no cardiac output so there will be sudden hemodynamic and risk cardiorespiratory compromise so similarly in tension pneumothorax also similar pattern will occur okay because uh, there will be no uh, there will be decrease in cardiac output because of obstruction okay so so uh, what else okay so similarly like uh, if we just uh, think about other uh, amniotic fluid embolism because in amniotic embolism and fat embolism actually there is also not only obstructive theory there is also uh, immunological mediated okay so they said that this is a sort of hypersensitivity reaction rather than exact obstruction so that's the reason that uh, but the treatment is the same there is nothing special you will be doing all the, the common things which you will be doing yes in thromboembolism you will be uh, finding it pulmonary angiography and maybe you are using the stpa uh, plasmin and uh, what what you say I, i forgot what is the abbreviation for tissue plasminogen activator tissue plasminogen activator yes okay tpa so otherwise in fat embolism there is no actually clear mechanism for example if you have a patient with fat embolism the people will say that will you cancel the surgery no if you have to support the hemodynamic will support the patient but you have to do the surgery because if you don't do the surgery there will be another attack of fat embolism till the time you don't fix the fracture there will be chance of fat embolism there will be chance of fat embolism so you have to fix it okay similarly amniotic fluid embolism usually after delivery if it is uh, it has occurred it will be in the differential diagnosis of uh, maternal collapse one of the finding of uh, one of the differential diagnosis for maternal collapse okay so this is how you can approach and uh, for example if you have a problem with spo2 okay so it may be because of upper airway obstruction or lower airway obstruction okay or there may be some cardiovascular problem okay la uh, not never forget there may be some error okay that's why whenever you are looking at uh, the spo2 uh, you have to see the graph if the graph is not good you should not look at the saturation because if graph is not good even if it is 100% or if it is 1% this is uh, uh, you cannot rely on it so of course you have to look for the error and it it, it the causes may be uh, purely respiratory or cardiovascular mainly okay and then you can probe what may be the reason for example uh, the, uh, the, the this is you can call as hypoxia okay so hypoxia may be because of gas exchange problem Okay, or because of the as I told you that cardiovascular 
that may the patient is in shock there will be hypoxia okay patient is having problem in the lungs there is pulmonary edema or pulmonary like uh, any 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 restrictive lung disease or like upper, for example upper airway obstruction even then the result will be hypoxia because there is no gas i don't know oxygen going down so there will the result will be decrease in oxygen saturation similarly if there is bronchospasm okay so uh, no air can uh, like uh, the ventilation is in problem so there will be still will be problem if there is for example myocardial infarction and patient is going into cardiac arrest or because of arrhythmia again there will be spo2 so whenever there is spo2 decrease in spo2 you don't have to stop here you have to look at the other things that is there any uh, associated tachycardia or bradycardia okay or hypertension or hypotension because you can have any of the combo deal and then you have to clinically correlate and whenever you are dealing with such things you have to rule out the serious complications first all always like pulmonary embolism okay like pulmonary edema like pneumothorax okay before going into any other thing because you have read in many times about the differential diagnosis of hypoxia and differential diagnosis of increased airway pressures okay so all the things which we do is like there is kinking of the tube or there is secretions okay so you have done many times so i'm not going in in the but but, but actually this is the same thing you circuit circuit problem okay there is oxygen failure okay there is some problem in the sensor so there there may be so many reasons about it but you will go one by one you will be again you will go back to the abc you will take the patient in manual if the patient is intubated for example and then then you will check the compliance of the lung you will see adequate uh, inadequate anesthesia maybe patient is breathing fighting with the ventilator and patient be is becoming hypoxic or or as i told you that pulse oximeter may be not be functioning the, there is a, some uh, some uh, like errors because of some uh, like patient is cold patient is in hypotension and then you have to correlate the things okay similarly for example similar is thing for end tidal co2 okay so end tidal co2 actually if you have to choose between spo2 and end tidal what will you choose Yes, please. Anyone? Will you choose? And yes, and tidal CO2. Okay, because uh, there will be some store of SpO2. Uh, sorry, oxygen. So SpO2 will go down slowly. And tidal CO2. If the patient suddenly stops breathing, or if there is no cardiac output, this thing will be affected first. So and tidal CO2, please. always consider it is as more important than even spo2 so uh, like uh, end tidal co2 is sometime related to carbon dioxide production so you have to look at the temperature as well okay so because there are some uh, hyper metabolic states like malignant hyperthermia like uh, thyroid crisis okay like uh, nms neuroleptic malignant syndrome okay serotonin syndrome okay or any other uh, hypermetabolic state so whenever co2 you have to look at the temperature as well okay so some of the things will be related to it and in for example if you are discussing about malignant hyperthermia you cannot discuss all the complication i'm just trying to give you a hint and correlations together so malignant hyperthermia again call for help stop stop the triggering agent again uh, attach the vapor free machine okay and then because everything is related to co2 and hypermetabolism you are doing cooling maneuvers you are passing ng tube and giving cold saline you are passing foley's and passing uh, cold uh, irrigation okay and then the ultimate treatment is dentrolene okay in addition to the uh, the the supportive maneuvers which you are doing okay similarly almost similar is in thyroid crisis same cooling maneuvers same same things and then you are doing 
the starting through ng2 propyl thiourocil and here you extra thing is conversion stop of conversion of uh, thyroid hormones so you are giving steroids you are giving propanolol uh, so the, uh, you are giving uh, propyl thiourocil to stop the conversion and then the rest of the things are the almost the same nms actually it's a differential diagnosis and it is related to the uh, antipsychotics okay and uh, you have to give the support treatment okay so this is related to co2 and temperature okay so similarly as i wrote respiratory rate and pattern okay so for example if there is shallow and uh, slow so among there may be an, an so many factors but you will first of all um, in the anesthesia floor you will rule out opioids okay so, and then you can you will have to see the how much opioid you had given and actually then you will be giving the naloxone iterated doses of naloxone which is opioid antagonist similarly in any any cause of respiration in addition to all the respiration problem you have to look at the cns as well okay because if there is any neurological insult it may be reflected as pattern in the respiratory uh, like uh, cns involvement you have to rule out so for the if uh, like uh, for example opioids or if for example if you have given uh, benzodiazepine okay then you have to give flumazenil it's antagonist you can see the doses about naloxone and flumazenil it is antagonist for it and then another another thing related to cns or for example if patient is not able to uh, awake then there is a medication which is a cns stimulant doxapram okay it's it's a generalized cns stimulant and it's it also the uh, stimulate the respiratory center okay so if there is any problem with the respiratory rate okay for example patient is in pain okay or patient is having inadequate anesthesia again then there may be changes in respiratory rate. whether the patient intubated or not intubated this can occur okay then another thing is that maybe there is some serious problem like pulmonary embolism okay in pulmonary embolism maybe patient initially initial stages patient may be tachypneic tachycardic okay so that's what i told you that you always have to correlate the things okay so then uh they you have to look at the signs of airway obstruction okay so usually there may be some infective causes of airway obstruction or some uh, physical obstruction okay like foreign body or inflammatory like uh, for, it also will come in the physical like inflammatory like for example this uh, tumors tumors okay or uh, what is that uh, epiglottitis and uh, group and group. okay so you you have to just see and then what will be happening the pattern signs of obstruction okay any signs of obstruction which may be in the form of rate or rhythm and there may be some sounds hoarseness or the sounds will be created okay and Strider. use of accessory muscles okay what else there is another thing nasal flaring okay and again you have as airway obstruction and then next step will be conscious problem consciousness problem okay patient may be irritable fighting moving here and there and then like you have to correlate that what is the reason okay so airway obstruction respiratory rate respiratory pattern signs of obstruction then you have to correlate with the the things which you will be getting is maybe spo2 consciousness problem and there is airway obstruction you will find some sounds sounds maybe uh, strider sounds maybe lower airway obstruction okay so you have to correlate the things which you will be in front of you will be respiratory rate respiratory pattern spo2 okay 
and the rest of the things are the generalized may tachypnea uh, sorry tachycardia because of uh, hypoxia so you have to correlate okay so labored breathing abnormal rhythm okay upper airway obstruction lower airway uh, if it is upper airway obstruction you have to treat it with antibiotics or you have to treat it with anti-inflammatories in the form of dexamethasone or in the form of racemic epinephrine and you have to manage the airway okay and if you are not able to intubate you have to go for tricuspid. so th th this is the step-by-step -step approach to deal with it and similar approach will be for air, uh, this one uh, foreign body okay because you have to physically remove the foreign body and uh, if it is your if maybe partial obstruction if you are trying baby is crying too much maybe it becomes full obstruction in that scenario you have to be ready for any uh, any uh, like uh, emergency maneuvers to be done okay so in that whenever you are discussing about foreign body you have to tell about uh, management of uh, enzolysis like uh, you're doing the enzolysis because majority of time it may be you, it can be adult but usually it will be pediatric patient or in adult if there may be some other neurological problem problem in the swallowing there is a, uh, like any neuromuscular this uh, neuromuscular disease in which there is there are chances of aspiration or things like that okay so you have to keep in consideration any muscular dystrophies or any neuromuscular problem or neurological problem okay so this is uh, what is related to it uh, we missed here this uh, uh, arrhythmias okay because uh, um, and, uh, whenever there is uh, like uh, cardiovascular involvement it is in the form of tachycardia bradycardia uh, hypertension hypotension arrhythmias or then if it is not treated the serious arrhythmias are cardiac arrest for example okay so the reason will be multidimensional there may be again again as i told you that always see for surgical factors patient factors anesthetic factors you are giving too much anesthesia this is causing hypotension okay and it can a uh, severe hypotension is causing hypo, uh, anoxia or even can cause cardiac arrest so, so you will be thinking about anesthetic factors similarly your patient is bleeding too much so maybe the hypovolemia is the cause of hypotension then there you are giving some medication and there is uh, anaphylaxis so it may be presented as hypotension but in, in the hypotension what thing extra thing will be there there will be lower airway obstruction site like feature of bronchospasm in addition to the rash and everything but hypotension with airway pressure rule out any anaphylaxis okay so the, the, this is how you will be targeting it okay so arrhythmias maybe bradyarrhythmias, arrhythmias tech arrhythmias we will discuss in detail i think uh, um, we will just continue from here i hope uh, you uh, gain something okay and uh, we will continue tomorrow from here you you just look at the file and we will discuss some of uh, more of the um, uh, this complications and critical events okay so any questions any anyone wants to ask anything or just share anything okay thank you very much we will just continue the same time tomorrow bye bye